Hey guys, Meet Rebel Chris Tomer here with this Monday mountain weather update. We're going to do a little tour here first. Some live cameras. We'll go up to Alta ski area in the Wasatch Front of Utah, and you can see some snow come down. It's very light. Like I've been saying the last couple of days, under an inch of accumulation. So on and off light snow today for a lot of the Wasatch. So the view right now, obviously still dark. Now up at Jackson Hole, they're reporting five inches of new snow in the last 24 hours with some very light additional snow today. Um, nice view there from the top of the, uh, the Teton lift. So far this, for the season, 73 inches up there at Jackson Hole. Now in Breckenridge, some snow coming down, probably going to pick up um, another one, maybe two inches of accumulation up there. You can see everything sort of coated in some new snow and some wind blowing that snow around as well. That is from Peak 7 over there, if you're familiar with that area around Breckenridge. Uh, let's go to Loveland Ski Area. Things are still shrouded up there after an inch of accumulation, likely going to see another one or two inches of accumulation up there. The snow is going to linger, especially over the continental divide of Colorado. I think what we're going to see is a shrouding effect. It's going to kind of get caught on top of the continental divide, and we're going to continue to just kind of see the moisture sit there with on and off snow and some additional accumulation, some light additional accumulation. So let's go to the northeast, and here is your radar out of the northeast. Uh, and you'll notice this is the next storm system coming in, but there is some rain with it. I expect a shot of light to moderate accumulation for the major ski areas tonight. Then we're going to have to worry about um, the possibility of rain and snow with the next storm system. So the track right here, you can tell, is changing. Everything was coming in from the north and diving straight down into the northeast. Now everything is starting to come around from the west, even southwest. So that's going to that's really going to warm things up over the next few days. Okay, here's the radar in Colorado. Uh, you can see some of that blue. It's very light with a cold front that's basically draped over the I-70 corridor and across the eastern plains. So again, that's going to kind of shroud the continental divide with on and off snow showers pretty much all day today, maybe even lingering into tomorrow morning. That may sit there for that long. Uh, here's water vapor. I'll set the table for you. So on this particular uh, animation, the drier air aloft is in the oranges and the reds, and your moisture aloft is in the whites and the blues. So you've got a storm system here, you've got another one here, you've got another one behind that. Um, and there's your storm system. You kind of see it out to the northeast. And here's the front that's rolling through um, Colorado and also Utah. It's right here. And you've got colder air diving in behind it, helping to kind of increase the ratios and snow growth um, across a lot of the, uh, the Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado areas. But again, it's minor. That front is minor. Eventually, what's going to happen is this entire collection of, of um, this entire trough with these low pressures, this will start to sink to the south a little bit more, and it's going to affect um, California. And eventually, it's going to send uh, moisture into the interior parts of Nevada, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and also Colorado as we get past probably 1212 and the 12, 13, 14, 15 and beyond. So a little more of an active pattern. And you'll know, still keep an eye on the integrated vapor transport forecast. I mean, it's also sort of indicating the possibility after 1212, after 1213, of potentially a bump in some moisture, maybe a little bit of an atmospheric river component there around 1214 and 1215 um, on the weaker side. But nonetheless, that might help, help to juice up one of those storm systems that comes in. Okay, here's my uh, timeline for best odds of snow for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, Interior, BC, and the Northeast. Um, so for example, in the Wasatch, light snow accumulation today and then light late 12 into 13, and then potentially moderate to heavy 12, 14, and 12, 15. In Colorado, light today, light to moderate 12, 13, light on 12, 15. So there's a couple or three different storm systems. Um, and again, things do turn more active after around 12, 13, 12, 12, 12, 13, and beyond. Uh, in the Northeast, I think we're going to see some light snow accumulation uh, this afternoon, tonight. And then there's that rain chance. Uh, as the flow shifts, a lot of the, it becomes more of a coastal storm for 1211, and that pushes in a lot of warmer air. Um, so it could see rain on 1211, even at the highest of elevations of the northeast. And then that turns over to snow that night, uh, light snow accumulation on 1212. Let me go back to the west. Here's Alta. Here's the forecast mediagram for Alta. 
So here's the column for today, Monday, December 9th. Notice light snow accumulation under an inch today for Snowbird and, and Alta, and likely going to be the case for Solitude, Brighton, Park City, Deer Valley, Snow Basin, all those places under an inch of accumulation. And the winds today could gust 30 to 40 miles per hour. Uh, temperatures only in the single digits and teens today. So a much colder day at 9,000 feet uh, at Alta, Snowbird, Little Cottonwood Canyon tomorrow. Highs in the upper teens, and then by the time we get to Wednesday, we're back to around 30 at 9,000 feet for the high temperature. Okay, let's go back to Colorado, and I want to look at, let's go to Arapahoe Basin. So here's the time height forecast for Arapahoe Basin. This is humidity for the next 72 to 80 hours. So in, in other words, we're looking for moisture in the atmosphere. Um, the timeline's at the bottom. You read that from right to left, and it's a slice of all the vertical layers here. So what you notice right away is the moisture. The green is there. It's there now, it's there this afternoon, and it might be there tomorrow morning. That's why I'm saying this will probably the snow will probably get hung up on top of the continental divide, a shrouding effect where we're just going to keep the condensation and the snow going with light additional accumulations all the way into tomorrow morning across Loveland, A Basin, Keystone, Winter Park, you know, all those areas and probably spilling down uh, over the top of Summit County as well. In fact, here's the latest snow forecast. I pretty much agree with it. This is for A Basin. So this is thinking that snow off and on continues today, tonight, and even tomorrow morning with an additional one to three inches of accumulation. So that's, that's a lingering effect of that snowfall that's going to sort of just hang there. Okay, let me show you what the forecast jet stream is going to look like. So by the time we get into Tuesday, the cold front we have now over the Intermountain is gone. Now we look to the west and watch the jet stream reorganize and it starts to come a little further to the south and it brings in ripples of low pressure. It, be, it turns much more active after 12-12. Here comes an area of low pressure. That moves into California, then into the interior. Another one lined up. That one moves in 12-16, 12-17 and beyond. Okay, let me take a look at some precipitation forecast here. So this is the forecast radar and satellite. This is by 5.30 this afternoon. Notice the blue over Colorado, a little lingering blue over parts of Wyoming, and a little bit over Utah. That moves away. That cold front is gone. Moves off to the east. Then we just wait. Here comes the next storm system. And this one uh, is 12-11, 12-12 through the Sierra, the Pacific Northwest, and B.C. Sends a little area of snow into the interior. That is very light. That slides through Utah and Colorado. Here comes a bigger storm system right here. This is 12-14 with a pretty good snow for the Sierra. Snow moving into Idaho, Pacific Northwest, B.C. Now watch what happens to this snow. It does hit the Wasatch more squarely into 12-15. Snow for the Tetons, snow building into Colorado, mainly western slope, central to north. Here comes another storm system, 12-16, 12-17 from California, and then that one moves, almost fades into the interior, and another one for the Pacific Northwest. Okay, here's my snow forecast. So basically all of today through the 12th, so the next two or three days. So this takes care of our cold front and that tiny little area of snow that comes flying out of California. So mainly one to four in Colorado, maybe a couple of inches there in the, uh, the Wasatch and some very light accumulations up in the Tetons and beyond. Here's a bigger time frame. So this is 1213 through 1218. So this accounts for at least a couple of storm systems. So the numbers in the Sierra have gone down, but we're still looking at potentially 8 to 14 from Mammoth up to uh, Tahoe, quite a bit more up at Shasta, and potentially a foot or more through the Pacific Northwest, the high cascades, the volcanoes, looking pretty good through interior BC. Could see a foot up there at Revelstoke, um, 6 to 8 through Kicking Horse and Fernie and Red Mountain. Um, looking good across Idaho with 8 to 12, potentially 6 to maybe 10 across the Tetons and maybe 8 to 12 for the Wasatch. That shot of accumulation late 14 into 15 right now looks decent. So that could crank out, you know, 8 to 12 inches of accumulation. And Colorado looking at potentially 3 to 8 inches of accumulation. Okay, let's go to the northeast. So the problem in the northeast is going to be the rain on the 11th. 
that appears to be a definite piece of the puzzle. So rain, and then it will change over to snow that night into the 12th. So that cuts down on snow total accumulation. There will likely be some lake effect behind that, which will benefit Snow Ridge. But, you know, this is where the numbers were roughly yesterday. Four to eight inches of accumulation across Vermont, New York, New Hampshire, and Maine. That's probably going to do it. Uh, because the storm comes up along the coast, it tends to push a lot of warm air in. And I think we're just going to see rain on the 11th. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this morning mountain weather update. We're going to end on the, the big map here for the West, 12, 13 through the 18th. Definitely looks like a more interesting period for the West with some bigger totals. Um, just keep your fingers crossed. We definitely need the snow now. All right, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in here. I appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.